Good evening again, my brothers and sisters. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you again. And I trust over the past week, you have had the opportunity to look at Ephesians 2 again and the, the, the verses that we have dealt with 1 to 10. And I trust that it has impacted you in a significant way. This evening, we'll be looking at a few, if, if you, if Ephesians 2 again, but we are going to continue from verse 11 to 22 and we are going to dissect it out. And I trust that you will be empowered by what we receive here. We're going to look at it from the theme, a new person. Let us, let us pray. Mighty God, we thank you again for this opportunity to be here, Lord, to glean from your word. And Lord, we just pray that your anointing will fill this place and that even those who listen, mighty God, will be touched in a special way. Lord, enlighten us. Help us, mighty God, to bring across what you want to go across. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, trust you have ent you know really liked the new format that we have taken here. And again, I have invited you know Dr. Heather Jones Free to be part of this discussion of Ephesians 2 verses 11, 11 to 22. Welcome, um, Mrs. You. Free. And at this time, I'll ask you to just read the passage for me, Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 22. Thank you. Okay. A very good evening, everyone. Let us look at verse 11 to the end. Wherefore, remember that you, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, or two, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, grow it unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together for an habitation of God 
through the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Wow. This one is loaded, I believe. <laughs> what do you yes, think? Yes, yes. This is really loaded. But you mm. know, as I listen very carefully, something again just came out strikingly to me. Paul knew that in order for the church to be built and to develop into what God wants the church to be. I believe Paul recognized that you're going to have people from different backgrounds. You're yes. going to have people from different ethnic groups. You have, but how are you going to get everyone now to, you know, sit down, you know, in, in, work, in, in, together. work together in harmony. And this is going to be very important. And I believe the message here is, is really empowering us how to build the church. Yes. What do you think about that? So, yes. so, so three, point, three points came out very forcefully at me. One, the Gentiles were alienated from God and the Jews. And, and that came out between verse 11 and 12. But look at this. Christ reconciled the two groups and united them. And that's what I get from, you know, from what verse 13 to 18 is saying. And then... The third point I get across here is that the Gentiles now can be part of the same building because now they are reconciled, which is built on Christ and the Apostle. And mm -hmm. this brings us right down to the end. Because if, if you look at it, it would appear as if this appears to be, you know, um, um, the summary of, of what Paul is trying to get across. Yes. And here they, they, they use the Gentiles. And in our situation, you see in the world today, you have different people with different ideas, different, different backgrounds. backgrounds. How are you going to get them in to work together towards Christ? And I think this is what we really want to discuss in, in, in this Bible study. So I'm going to ask you this question. I'll probably be a surgeon. It might, it might be better for me to explain this one. Alienated from God and the Jews. Look. They were alienated because they were pushing what the circumcision. No, no, let's think about it. What is circumcision? From a physical perspective, circumcision is removing the foreskin of the penis. My question now, how can that really save you? That's a physical attribute. In fact, we, we, we look at it that once you are circumcised, it's more hygienic for the male. How does that affect your spirituality? And I believe um, this have a, a, you know, a greater meaning. And circumcision you know, is it, like a physical um, um, symbol of a covenant for the Jews, isn't it? Yes, yes. Isn't it? Yes. But, 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 but they use this, this physical attribute to consider themselves superior. Yes. But, but I believe they were missing something. What's your view on that? I think they were missing something yes. that was vital. Yes, they, they didn't understand the yes. new birth that causes a person to now be identified in Christ. That's right. The new identity now was Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And, the, and that foundation would be Christ and Christ alone. But they wanted to bring in some behavior or some tradition, some rituals to divide. That's right. That's but, right. But Paul clarified that. In fact, Paul recognized that it, it was like these little things that were dividing people and the church wouldn't, couldn't grow. So God has a great plan to redeem, redeem um, sinners from sin, to adopt them as his own children and to build them into a beautiful church. Mm. I think that's what it's about. So in doing so, to bring glory to himself and to create in us, he, to, you know, he intends within us to show that glory of who he is. But in order for us to do that, we need unity. Yes. So unity is going to be absolutely important if we're going to build the church. And, Definitely. You know, look at the world today. There are so many churches. Look, what's your comment on that? Hmm. You, you think we are missing something? <laughs> well, if we look at the... I've heard somebody say this, that if you, if you look at the word 
denomination. It comes from the root word denominator, and a denominator divides. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, it is a division, but Christ wants a united body. Yes. Because disunity is the devil's playground. That's where he is able to maneuver his, his deception, his lies, and his tricks through disunity. That's correct. That's correct. Well, you know what the words say, my presence is most clearly known when brothers dwell together in unity. So, so, so what I'm learning here is if we are going to build a church, we need unity. Definitely. We, we, we have to drop off all the little physical attributes. You know, some people focus on, on what might to me appears like, 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 you know, a, 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 a minutiae. But what I'm understanding here is that in order for us to build a church, we need a deeper circumcision. And you know what this circumcision is? The circumcision of the heart. Yes. And I think that's where it goes. So, so, so once you, 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 you can create unity, look, it's going to overflow into an enormous, you know, positive thing. In order to build the church. So I, I think this Bible, out of this Bible study, you see, we want to encourage our brothers and sisters how we can encourage unity. And you know what I want to do? I want to share a little experience that I believe brings unity out very well. And then we can use that as a springboard to put it into the natural. Because, you know, sometimes when I speak to some of my learned friends, you know what they said to me? Oh, Dr. Frey. You are telling me about Bible verse that I know about. Tell me about, you know, something that is natural. You know, some people, some people want to see something tangible. You realize that? Yes. I want to share Indeed. this with you. There was a little boy, you see. He had a childhood uh, malignancy. I think it was a leukemia that he had. And in order to treat it successfully, the child had to get chemotherapy. What are the sad thing about chemotherapy? Is that you, you're going to lose all your hair. I mean, it's part of the tree. It's a side effect of chemotherapy. And you know, this was very touching when I read of this story. When the little boy completed um, ke uh, chemotherapy, he was bald. And when he went to school, he, he was a youngster, probably about six or seven years old. You, you can just imagine how the other students would have looked at him because, look here, he's different. Teasing. It's just like the Gentiles were different from the Jews, if you, if you want to look at it from that mm -hmm. perspective. And you know how children are. They would want to engage in teasing this youngster. And you know, one young boy out of the day, you know what he did? At the end of that day, he got together with all of the boys. And they decided that tonight, all of them were going to shave their heads. Mm. So they shave off their heads. And when they returned to school the next day, all the boys were born. Mm. And guess what? The, you could see the unity now. Everybody now could it's identify alive. with that youngster. And you know, when I look at that, I said, this is absolutely profound. And, and, and this is what Christ wants for us. Yes. He, he wants us to build unity. You, That's you why know? he says we are to grieve with those who grieve yes, and yes. rejoice with those who rejoice. Because if we share in the lives, the struggles, the challenges of each other, um, it, brings, it brings that strength that unity produces in a congregation. In fact, to emphasize unity, just read 20, verse 22 of Ephesians 2 there again. The last verse. What it says, the last verse. In whom we also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So, so it brings about the unity, isn't it? Yes. It, it brings about unity there. And Jesus brings through about... Through the Spirit. Yes, it brings about it through the Spirit. It brings about it through diversity. In fact, another translation, you know, explain it as Jesus bringing unity to diversity. No, no, I, th I, I think, listen to me on this one. You might not agree. 
I believe the problem in the church that we are facing is probably seen, you know. What's your comment on that? All right. <laughs> explain that one. Yeah, yes. I'll explain that one. If, if, if you read from the passage, we see where circumcision was dividing the Gentiles from... In fact, you know, as a background reading to this, you know, you know that the Gentiles, there was a part, in fact, of the, 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 the temple that they were able to go into. And mm -hmm. there was a part that only the Jews go into. Mm -hmm. so, so that was very interesting because right away there were segregation. Yes. No, the, why would you have segregation at that? that? It, 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 it leads to a sort of, sort of self-righteousness. It, it leads to a sort of arrogance. And I put it like this, I could be wrong. It can lead to sin. It was because, sin. Yes, because you are now sin. looking at, 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 at something that looks to me so simple. And yet, it's a big thing. So, so what do you think is the solution to all of this now? I think, okay, yeah. I think if, if you value what the Lord Jesus did... On the cross of Guess Calvary. Guess what? I like that. So the solution is Jesus himself. Yes. yes. Jesus himself. So, so, so let us try now to emulate what Jesus took. Go, 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 go ahead. I shouldn't stop you. If we truly understand how far gone we were, how desperate we were, how dead in sins and iniquity we were, we were outside of the commonwealth of, of God, of his promises. We were aliens. We, we, were, we were under the devil's um, command, slaves to sin. And then when Jesus transferred us through his blood and into his kingdom, if we truly are appreciative of our salvation, if we value it, if we treasure it, then we will love Jesus enough to love others. And guess what? You know the passage demonstrates that very well. L let's look at verse 13. Read for me what verse 13 says. And uh, probably you would want to want to read it from my little the way Bible here. It, it, it sort of puts it a little bit clearer. What, what, tell me what verse 13 s says. From, but from no, this. but yes. no, you belong to Christ Jesus. And though you once were far away from God. Wow, that is the point I want to make. No, no. You have been brought very near to him because of what Jesus Christ has done for you through his blood. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's right there. Yes. But, but it appears that it was sort of hidden. Let's look at verse 15. I want you to read it from this Bible again. And I want you to see what this, this brings out here. Verse 15. By his death, he ended the angry resentment between us caused by the Jewish laws which favored the Jews and excluded the Gentiles. For he died to annul that whole system of Jewish laws. Then he took the two groups that had been opposed to each other and made them parts of himself. Wow, so this one. Guess what this verse 15 is We're saying not, in summary. All right, go on. I'm go not on. finished. I'm excited about <laughs> verse 15. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, he made them parts of himself. Thus, he fused us together to become one new person. And at last, there was peace. Wow. So, so let me summarize it. I like summarize this. In verse 15, he created a new man. Yes. Create a new man. Wow. In this Christ. Is, in Christ. No, we have so to no, say that. Christ was the, yes, the, the, yes, yes. the preeminent yes, yes, one. Yes, yes. But, but, but look at verse 16 now. I'm going to show you the template here. The template is well set out here in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 2, you know. Yes. What 16 said. I want you to read it from this verse. Okay, verse 16. It says, as parts of the same body, which now they were, our anger against each other has disappeared. For both of us have been reconciled wow. to, to Hold God. On. I love that word. Reconcile us both to God. to God. So guess what? It's right there. We just have to... I, I trust that our listeners are listening and they are making notes here. 
because we are seeing now in verse 16, we say a reconciliation of both to God. Yes. So no, don't, 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 don't. finish. Yes, yes, go ahead. It says to, to end the verse, and so the feud ended at last, last. at the cross. Wow, no, no, that's powerful. That's powerful. The feud, say that again, the feud ended, ended at the cross by brothers and cross. sisters. You need to know anymore. But let's look at first Remember 17. Remember what Billy Graham said? Yes, Quote yes. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billy, what Billy Graham said. He said the ground is level at the foot, foot of, of the, the cross. cross by brothers and sisters. There should look, be look, no look, division. Look, look at verse 17. Once you are at the foot of the cross, the ground is no level. For we live in everybody, harmony. Everybody, everybody, no matter everybody. You, doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what yes, you believe in. Yes, Let's yes, read verse seventeen yes, now. Yes. Tell me verse it, it seventeen. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter about you know educational status. No, no, no. About no, no. Um, no, possession. No, 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 about no. titles. Yes, yes. About yes. who is up, who is down, who is from across. Yes. You know, like the Samaritans, you yes. know, and the Jews. All of that um, division yes. was ended at the cross. And 17 says, yes. And he has brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were very far away from him and to us Jews who were near. Now all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, may come to God the Father with the Holy Spirit's help because of what Christ has done. So guess what? Done. I love to summarize things again. So what I'm hearing here, 17 is telling us to preach peace to you who were far off. So he's bringing us together. So guess what? Paul, in his wisdom and spiritual guidance from God, said there is no ground to stand on if we want to be, you know, to boast. If we want to boast, we don't have no ground for standing them. No. There is nothing for us to boast about. No. We, we, we only can boast in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. You want to comment like on that? Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Because it is salvation that has given us all that we have through Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. So why would we boast about things Absolutely. when it is through Christ's Christ. suffering Absolutely. And the shedding of his blood has given us salvation. And salvation is not only about going, dying and going to heaven. It's a package. Yes. You know, salvation is a package. It includes all that we need in this life. And the Bible told us that, that um, I think we read it, we read it um, somewhere about him giving us all that we need for, for life and godliness. Everything we need. Is in salvation. So, so, so our health, you know, yes. our prosperity, our relationship with people should be through Christ. Absolutely. Through so, Christ. so what I'm getting here, for the church to grow, t tell me now, for the grow, church to grow, my brothers and sisters, the church must be like a family. Yes. You, you know, that's why sometimes the children say aunt and uncle. What yes. we want to do is create a family situation. And look here, when you create unity in the church, look, we cannot end this discussion, you know, unless we talk about some of the benefits that derives from unity in the church. And yes. I, want to, I want to pick up one and, and then we can talk about this. I want to tell my brothers and sisters that when we have unity in the church, we become cheerful givers. You want to comment on that one? <laughs> yes, when we are together in one accord and working towards one goal, we, f we will find that everybody wants to help. When we love each other, when we're moving together, everybody wants to help. You, you want to give us an example from Exodus 36, when Moses was building that tabernacle? Yes. But what, what did you see yes. from that, that passage? You don't have to read the whole passage, but we can just summarize what okay. happened there. All right, so Moses was given this assignment from God to build the tabernacle. He showed him the heavenly picture and he wanted a symbol of it on the earth where he could meet with his people and commune with them. And Moses then took on the task. It was a very detailed, I mean, the size of it, the, 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 everything that was to be used in it. And so Moses asked the people to help. 
the people were so in one accord wow that <laughs> Moses had, had to had ask to stop them. them. He, the Bible says he sent a proclamation to the people <laughs> to stop giving. My brothers and sisters, can you imagine? We, we, we have to stop people from giving in the church? <laughs> can, can you imagine that? Look, cheerful givers. Let, let's give another example. What about the volunteers that, that we see when Nehemiah was building the wall? What, what, right. what happened there? The Bible <laughs> said that they... When they got to halfway yes. of building the wall, it said the, the people had a mind to work. No, the people had a mind to so work. So you never had to force them to work. Nobody had <laughs> to, to, to. People to just be volunteer and want to work. Everybody. My brothers and sisters. Everybody this had is, a mind to work. This is amazing. It Look. comes through <laughs> unity. Unity. Of purpose unity. And oh, unity. Let's give another example before we close of unity. What about. With, with, with the building of the temple by Solomon, you, you know, and it, what we saw there in, uh, it's, I think it's First Chronicles, Chronicles 29, 29 verse 9. What, right. what it says, what it says. 29 verse 9. It says that, Then the people rejoiced, so they were happy. They were joyful. And that's what unity brings in a church. If you go to a church and... You see love and unity and people happy. And you know that there's a spirit of togetherness. It is because they value their salvation. Uh, absolutely. I would say that. So the people rejoice for, they that, for that they offered willingly because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. So, so in other words, what we are seeing here, once there is unity, you don't have to force anybody to do anything. People will come in church and immediately they want to volunteer to clean the church, volunteer to do this. So it is that unity. I think that is what Paul was trying to tell us here. Yes. We need to build, my brothers and sisters, I trust this study has empowered you in such a way that you want to walk out now and to see how we can build unity in our church. We're going to be excited about wanting to volunteer. We're going to be excited about giving. We're going to be excited about doing things because we want to do it. And the minister don't have to beg us to do it. And I think that's what this is about. And I believe if you bring this out, you know, from this Bible study, we would have achieved what Part what God wants us to tell you this evening. Any final um, comment from you, well, uh, Mrs. Ray? I would close with a verse from Psalm 133, which we know yes. and which we ought to do. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm. And then it says, it says, For there... In that place where those people are in unity, the Lord commands the blessing. Wow. Once you have unity, the Lord commands the blessing. So my brothers and sisters, our team, a new person, you realize how exciting that new person is. And we just want to thank you to share with us this evening. You want to close in prayer for me? Okay. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you, God, for your plan to have a family here that you mm. can be yes, a, Lord. have fellowship with. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your church, Lord. We thank you, God, that we are, you have chosen us for such a time as this to be a part of your body. And God, we pray, Lord, for the strengthening of your body to be your representative mm. and your witness, yes, God, Lord. effective and relevant mm. to the world. Father, we pray, mighty God, against this unity. Yes, Lord. Lord we yes, bind Lord. up every spirit of, of, un yes, of this, this unity, yes, Lord. every spirit of strife, yes, Lord. every spirit yes, that comes Lord. to divide. Yes, Lord. We bind it bind and it. cast bind it out of cast your church, out yes, of your people, Lord. Father, because we know that the enemy loves mm. this unity and he thrives where there's disunity. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus, we declare, God, that your people 
us who you have uh, have saved yes, will Lord. come to that place, mighty God, where we we love. Mm. We, we, we desire, Lord, to support each other, to be a church, God, where there is such life mm. and, and joy Energy. and peace joy, and, and yeah. supporting of each other, Father, in every situation, mm. mighty God, that you can command your blessing and the blessing of the Lord that make it rich, rich and, and add, add it no, no sorrow. sorrow, for we ask in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know. Thank you.